So I've recently come across this subreddit called r slash true rate me. It first came to my attention when I saw some screenshots and some tweets. So this person has uploaded a picture of themselves onto the subreddit. This commenter has given this woman a 7 out of 10. And then they've gotten an official warning from one of the moderators for overrating this person with a 7 out of 10. These are some comments on a different post. This person gave them a 7.7. .7, this person gave them a 9. And then both of these commenters got permanently banned. Again, for overrating. In fact, all over the sub, you can see people have been deleted en masse for overrating, leaving a lot of people kind of confused what the heck the standards are here, with people arguing that you have to hate women to make it on this sub. Now you might be wondering to yourself how you can overrate someone on an arbitrary standard such as beauty. Typically this is something people would say is subjective, hence the saying beauty is in the eye of the beholder. But here on r slash true rate me they've got a purely objective system based on facts and figures. We're gonna take a look at what those standards are, but first we're gonna have like an overview look of the subreddit. So here in the about section, it says that the purpose of the sub is to provide accurate and objective ratings for individuals based on their facial aesthetics. The ratings follow a rating system developed by people who are very interested in human appearance and attraction. So yeah, the basis is people upload a picture of themselves and then strangers rate them on a scale from 1 to 10. The idea is that they're basing it off stuff like facial structure and symmetry, proportions and that kind of stuff. The idea of rating strangers on the internet is not exactly an unheard of thing. There's other subreddits that do this such as r slash rate me and even dating apps like Tinder, you're technically rating people. I can understand people wanting to get an objective perspective on how they look. Like if you ask your friends or family members, obviously they're gonna hype you up. Also, obviously a lot of people have warped self-perception. I do think that the execution on this subreddit, however, is incredibly flawed. Also personally, I do believe that beauty is almost completely subjective. There's celebrities out there that people go absolutely feral over and I have no attraction to whatsoever. I also personally am not a huge fan of rating people on a scale from 1 to 10. I am someone who's used apps like Tinder in the past, but you're not rating someone on a scale from 1 to 10 to that, you're simply saying yes or no and then they themselves get to judge you too. And it's not just about how you look, it's about your personality and everything. But as long as everyone on the subreddit is like a consenting adult, people can make their own decisions. I don't think we should fault this subreddit for simply existing. But also I feel like this subreddit really targets people who have low self-esteem and ultimately can cause harm over things that people realistically cannot change. So a quick look at the rules here, it's really what you would expect from a subreddit like this. You've got stuff like no hate speech, no posting other people's photos, no giving out personal information. You've got to be over the age of 18 to post. No not safe for work content, obviously no racism. There's also rules against rate inflating, which we talked about in the intro, which we saw those people get banned for, but also there's a rule against underrating. Also interestingly, incel terminology is prohibited, which involves words like Chad, Cuck, Stacy, and it's over. I don't know what, I don't know what that means. Also worth noting, comments without a rating or advice also prohibited. Here in the FAQ, they do address the argument that beauty is subjective. Well, of course, there's a subjective aspect to beauty. There's also an objective aspect. The subjective aspect, however, is possibly not even 50%. Why do you think there's always a general agreement on which celebrities are attractive and which are not? Sure, there's some personal preference to those involved, but if beauty was purely subjective, wouldn't there be an equal number of people who think, for example, that Danny DeVito is as good looking as Brad Pitt? Why is that not true if everyone's perception of beauty is just in their it's because beauty is largely objective. Many researchers have studied beauty and found many common traits in attractive people. Things like harmony, symmetry, certain measurements, ratios, etc. So yeah, I do absolutely agree that there is an objective aspect to beauty, but to say that it's more than 50% is, is wild. Yeah, there's absolutely more people who think that Brad Pitt is more attractive than Danny DeVito, but obviously that's an extreme example. Believe it or not, there's a lot of people out there who don't believe that Brad Pitt is attractive. People out there who would prefer a Timothy Chalamet or a Jeff Goldblum. People prefer different races, ages, sizes, genders, uh, whatever. And desired traits a lot of the time are dependent on people's culture. I absolutely believe there's objectivity involved, but I believe it, it, it caps out at a certain point. For me personally, it caps out at a certain point. My brain's not taking out that protractor and, and taking measurements of people's faces. But also, from what it looks like, they've done a lot of research. Maybe, maybe they're not basing this on nothing. Now that we've had a look at that, we should look at the exact criteria of how you should be rating people. People. So the rating system they're using is based off a standard distribution bell curve, which looks like this. They're using 5 as the average, and they argued that 60% of people fall within one standard deviation of the mean, so between 4 and 6. Which, which seems kind of reasonable. From what they've said, this is based on assumption as normal distribution is common. Now we can look into this in more detail. There's a men's rating primer and a women's rating primer, which tell us all the characteristics that we should be looking for. So this is the men's rating primer. And lucky for us, we've got Grant Gustin and Evan Peters to help us out. They've given Grant Gustin a 6.5 out of 10, and Evan Peters a 5 out of 10. Lord help me if Evan Peters is a 5 out of 10. So first thing to look at is facial harmony. Basically, how well all your features fit on your face. Then we've got facial features to determine symmetry and proportion. 
And number three here, we've got eye area. Here they're talking about eyebrows, orbital sockets, upper eyelid exposure. So the top row is good eye area, the bottom row is weak eye area. What's interesting for me here is that if they took this picture of Tom Cruise, I would have assumed he had weak eye area. It's it's not like a super flattering picture of him. But I'm not an expert, so I, I don't know. Next up, we've got skin. Here they talk about like evenness of skin. Whether it be redness or dark under eyes, acne. They've absolutely roasted Harry Styles here. As well as this poor stranger. I don't, I don't know what they have against this guy. They've got seven celebrities and, and then just some guy. Here we've got the perfect angle of the proper nose. What's interesting to me here is that they've called this a weak nose. But I thought traditionally this would be called a strong nose. I guess it's probably just different terminology. Here we've got the lips, an example of weak lips, notably being a lip injection gone wrong. And finally, we're on to jaw. Defined jaw good. Tom Hanks jaw bad. So just quickly thinking about this, for me personally, there's no way I'd be above a four. I've got a big forehead, which sends my facial proportions out of whack. I'm pale. I've got pretty poor skin. I have what they'd classify to be a weak nose. I'd say my lips are more thin. My only positive quality, according to this list, would probably be my jaw. They do have a list where they've rated all these celebrities. So we'll compare me to this list in a sec. First, we got to look at the women's primer. Now, if you thought there were a lot of aspects here to remember about men, let me show you the women's list. Already, this looks considerably more daunting. So here, we've got international supermodel Kate Moss sitting at a 7.5, and then Brie Larson at a 5.5. Again, here they are talking about facial harmony. When we get to the eyes, it gets interesting. So, the most desirable eyes to have as a woman are feline hunter eyes or feline innocent eyes. Those are the two best options. So top row is feline hunter eyes, second is feline innocent eyes, and then the third is, is weak eyes. Now, I would very much say that that is a really strange way to describe this. Maybe this is correct normal terminology. I, I, I just don't know. To me as an outsider, it sounds weird. But it gets a little bit weirder. So again, this is a primer to help us identify what makes a woman attractive. Feline hunter eyes are not preferred over feline innocent eyes, nor the other way around. They should not be compared to each other and are seen as independent traits. Okay, now let's read the description for feline innocent eyes. They are common among Asians and young children and have a cuter appearance. I definitely think there was a better way to phrase that. Like, like that, that's creepy. Next up, we're at skin again, and for some reason, they felt the need to roast Harry Styles again. This was the women's primer, and they still felt the need to roast Harry Styles. But not only Harry Styles, it's that random guy again. Leave this guy alone, dude. This poor guy, he's not even a celebrity, man. This is just some guy, unknown. Yeah, sure, you got beef with Harry Styles. Leave Mr. Unknown Guy alone, man. Here we got face shapes, talking about noses again, from good to weak. Good's at the left, and then weak is at the right. Here they are talking about lips. Again, good is on the left, and weak is on the right. And then they finished up here with a lot about bone structure. So with all this into consideration, just remember that at no point does people's bodies come into this, or their hair, or piercings, or their teeth, or anything like that. They're purely talking about the face and facial structure. Now let's look at the actual rating guides, starting with the men. Now at 10, there is literally no one. It says, this level is unattainable. This here, in my opinion, is one of the biggest flaws in the system. If the argument here is that beauty is objective and not subjective, it is based on facts and therefore can be measured. But as soon as you say that 10 is unattainable, it is no longer a measurable statistic. It is a hypothetical. But if beauty is based on all the traits we just looked at, then it has to be measurable. If it's not, then surely by logic, it has to be subjective. I'm also of the mentality that no one on the planet is perfect. But that's my opinion. It's not a fact. I don't believe that someone is going to show up someday so beautiful that my eyes melt out of my skull. Some kind of Lovecraftian incomprehensible beauty. But yeah, if 10's on the scale, surely someone would have to meet that. Otherwise, why would it be on the scale? But I'm no scientist or mathematician, so maybe I'm wrong about that. Anyway, back to the list. In the top 0.002%, so one in every 50,000 people, we have the ultra-attractive Super top model tier. Now, personally, I don't know any of these guys except for this guy here. I know him from the show Heroes. And yeah, look, they're all very, very attractive dudes. Now, here at 9, we've got one in every 20,000 extremely attractive top model tier. We got my guy Boone from Lost. At 8.5, we've got one out of every 3,000. Featuring my guy Chris Hemsworth from Home and Away. Here at number 8, we've got one of my favorite actors of all time, Daniel Day Kim. Also notably at 8, you're in the model tier. Here at 7.5, we've got one out of every 160 people will look like this. Uh, I know Richard Madden and Ronaldo, both pretty good looking. So here at 7, we have the top... 2.5%. So, 1 in 40 people is as good looking as these guys. I think 
Absolutely not. In my opinion, you would have to have the most sheltered life in the world to believe that. This is literally six dudes in the prime of their life. And not just six regular dudes, six celebrities. I think, as far as I know, they're all celebrities. Here at 6.5, they say that one out of every 15 people looks like this. Something like a quarter of the population of the world is between the ages of 40 and 60. And like 15% of people are over 60. So like 40% of the world are out of their prime. There's literally no way one in 15 people looks this good. These fellas be handsome. Anyway, it keeps going at here at 5.5. We've got Bryce Hall and DaBaby. Uh, Steven Yuen from, uh, from Walking Dead. At 5, at per perfectly average, they've got Anthony Mackie. Now, going back to placing me on the list, there's no way I'm a better looking dude than Anthony Mackie. Like, dude is handsome. So, at most, I could be 4.5. Anyway, then at 4, we've got Ed Sheeran, Psy, Jay-Z, DJ Khaled. And then kind of as the list goes on, it, it goes the way that, that you would expect. Honestly, in my opinion, it gets a little unnecessary for no reason. Now, for me, while I don't necessarily agree with this list that they've done, I would say there is some differentiation between the tiers. It's when it comes to the women, it becomes uh, incredibly confusing. So if it looks like I'm wearing a different outfit and it's a different day, uh, you're wrong. I've been wearing this the whole time. Please ignore my eyebrow for the rest of this video. It objectively looks good, okay? Anyway, here's the official women's rating guide. So I guess this is just my subjective opinion. But I feel like you could take any of these women from 9.5 all the way down to like, I don't know, 6.5 maybe? And you could change the order of them and, and nothing would change. I think all of these women here are like equally as beautiful. Like it almost feels arbitrary where they've been placed. Like with my uneducated eye, I don't know, like this woman is, is equally as attractive as like this woman, you know? The description for 7 to 7.5 here says, somewhat uncommon and most attractive women seen on a day-to-day -day basis. These women stand out from the crowd and may be able to model or be a successful Instagram model or influencer. So these women may be able to model. And then they put a picture here of Emily Radajkowski. I don't know how to say that. But what I do know about her is that she's like an international supermodel. So when they say maybe be able to model, what they mean is that, that she is literally a model. As far as I know, she's like one of the most famous models in the world. Because I don't know a lot of these women, I did some googling. Taylor Hill, who's at 9.5 here, she's talked very publicly about her struggles with acne. So then, by the logic of their initial primer thing, she would not be able to be 9.5. Like, she's beautiful, don't mistake me, but by their logic, she shouldn't be up there. This is Adriana Lima, who they put right at the top of the list. I feel like a lot of these pictures, if they were uploaded to the subreddit, they would not have given her a 9.5. Also, they're clearly not basing the scores here off the images that they've used, because they've done Madison Beer absolutely filthy. But look, again, I don't have the ruler out, I'm not taking measurements, just to me, as an outsider, it already feels kind of very subjective and maybe even arbitrary. And when you're so overly critical, putting literal supermodels at a 7, it doesn't allow for an accurate spread of attractiveness with, like, normal women. And I get that the argument is that 60% of people are going to fall into the 46 range, but this just seems excessive. Like, here at 5.5, it says, These women will be above average and somewhat good-looking, with some positive facial features and some negative features. And then they've got Sarah Roma, who I just looked up, again, is literally a model. So, one out of three women falls into the 5.5 category, and there's Sarah Roma, who again is a model. And then as we scroll down the list, it goes in a similar direction as the male one. So maybe this is my low IQ, limited, subjective brain talking here, but I feel like we could take almost all of the women right here and, and move them right up. To me, it just seems like very unrealistic standards of beauty. So yeah, overall, bad representation of men, maybe even a worse representation of women. So now we know what the requirements are, let's have a little look at the subreddit itself. Now we are going to be looking over pictures that people have uploaded. I personally will not be rating them. I know they've uploaded the pictures to be rated, but it's a premise I'm really not comfortable with. I just mostly want to talk about how strange I think the system is. So having a little scroll, we're just going to click on a random person. So first thing you'll notice from the comments is that most of them have been deleted. Like, a ton of them. And it looks like this on every single profile. So according to the mods, there's a lot of reasons behind this. A lot of people giving 10s, a lot of people asking for like DM requests, generally like creepy behavior. So it's really good those comments are being deleted. But where it's most strange to me is, is the cases that we looked at earlier. If you rate too low, you get banned. If you rate too high, you get banned. So it seems there's only a very slim margin for error. So if, if you comment what the mods deem as the wrong answer, you get banned. But if the mods have already made up their mind on what the true answer is, what's the point of getting a public opinion? If anything, this is going to drag all the ratings down because people are going to be too nervous about getting banned. You tend to see a lot of sixes and a lot of fives. 5.9, you're a hot chick. Pretty girl, 5.5. 6. The eyes are deep and piercing, your jawline, chin, and confident vibe you give off the contour of your cheeks are killer. So they get a little bit, they get a little bit subjective sometimes. Most girls can't pull off bangs, you do it fairly effortlessly. 5.75. So, not effortlessly enough. Let's have a look at this one. 
Again, a million deleted comments. A lot of 6.5s again. This person said 8 and they got a warning. 6.3, 6.2, 7. A lot of 7s. Another post, 5.7. 5.7, 5.2, 5, 5, 5, 5.5, 4.9. Again, a lot of deleted comments. So you kind of get the idea. I really feel like a collective rating system only really works is, is if it's a subjective opinion. For example, movie reviews. They vary greatly. Some people will love a movie, some people will hate it. But at the end, you come out with a general collective result and it's skews one way or the other. Or sometimes critics will hate a movie and audiences will love it or vice versa. Sometimes a niche market loves it and then it becomes a cult classic. And that's literally the point of these reviews. It's not a science, it's an opinion. Could you imagine if Scorsese went around deleting the reviews for movies that he didn't agree with? Not even his movies, just other people's movies because he's a good filmmaker. Spider-Verse was a good film, but Scorsese would have hated it. Not saying that the people running the subreddit are the Scorsese's of, of beauty. In fact, from what I've seen, they don't actually have any real qualifications. But you kind of get the metaphor that I'm saying. There's definitely like a science of what makes a good film, and that's totally fine if that's how people want to base their opinions around it. It just doesn't work like that in the real world. There's no reason for it to be a public forum if there's a wrong answer. It feels like what they would like more is like an algorithm or something that just scans people's faces and then spits out an answer. When everyone on a forum has the exact same opinion on something, by definition, that is a circle jerk. Also, with a lot of the people who are doing the ratings, I've been clicking through their profiles to see if they put themselves up on the subreddit, and from what I've seen so far, none of them have. I'm sure some of them have, but so far I haven't seen any. So at the end of the day, it could really be anyone saying this. But you don't have to be a chef to be a food critic. Now, what I find most interesting about the subreddit, which you may have noticed too at this point, is that we haven't seen any men. Now, men are not banned from the sub, not in the slightest. As we saw earlier, there's plenty of information about how we should be rating them. Now, what if I told you that tons of men were uploading pictures of themselves to the subreddit, just no one was replying to them. So if we go and sort by new, and I scroll down here, you will see that there are plenty of dudes. I would say it's pretty 50-50, if not potentially more skewed towards there being more men. I'm not gonna count it up, but to me, it definitely seems like there's plenty of dudes on here. But if there's so many dudes, why haven't I clicked on any of their profiles? Let's have a look at the top posts of all time. So this is the top posts of all time. We're doing a little exercise here. We're gonna keep scrolling until we find a dude. Okay, so here we have our first dude. As you'll notice, it's a cat. The cat is the first dude. So we had to scroll this far down the page and we've found the first dude and it's a cat. Now, obviously, this is a joke post. Cats cannot upload to Reddit, as far as I know. So we're gonna keep scrolling until we find one that's not a joke. Here we go. We've got male, 61 years old, trying to get back into the dating game. So, we've had to scroll this far down, and I don't want to be the bearer of bad news, but this is almost certainly another joke post. I went into this person's post history, and a couple years ago, they were an international student in Korea. Now, maybe he is a late-age student, I don't know, but for the purpose of this exercise, I'm going to assume that this is a joke post, and it was upvoted as a joke. Let's keep scrolling. We've done it. We have finally found one. Now, unless I've missed someone, this is the first real male poster. Now, what's so interesting about this guy is that one, he's extremely good looking. Dude is handsome. Like, let's not, let's not get it twisted. You're looking like handsome Squidward out here. Not only is he extremely good looking, he's also 37 years old. So it seems like the best way to get traction on this subreddit as a dude is to be absolutely exceptional. This guy's got phenomenal skin. I would skin this man and wear his, him as a coat. And even if you were so absolutely exceptional. You still only get rated a 6.5. Look, he does get a range from about 7 to 6. So, why is it that we had to scroll down so far? There's tons of men looking for approval or advice or tips. Tons of dudes trying to get an objective point of view. They'll get as much benefit out of this as anyone else, if not more. I know a lot of dudes, they, they just never get complimented ever. So, there's a couple main factors that I think are going on here. So, for starters, women are more criticized on their looks on a day-to-day -day basis, like in a real-life setting. So, there's definitely more of a culture around that. Not saying that men aren't, but it's typically in a much lesser extent and in, in different ways. The other factor that we should be looking at here is that maybe 
for a lot of people, this subreddit kind of operates as fetish content. At least, it's definitely coming across that way. Completely anonymous profiles, rating and ranking women based purely on looks. And they've got an excuse to say a pretty mean number because they're backed up by science. While I think on this subreddit, a lot of people do genuinely have an interest in this topic, the more comments I'm reading, a lot of these people are coming across as finally having a way to kind of degrade women. Or for a lot of them, it feels like they're trying to humble them. I think a lot of these people really like the idea of like a woman needing their approval. Again, I don't think that's the inherent purpose of this sub, but I think it really attracts those kinds of people. Even moving away from that stuff, a lot of the ratings do feel very sexualized. Such as these comments I found comparing a girl to Lana Rhodes, who is a very famous porn star. A lot of the comments also feel really disconnected from reality. And some of them, the way they're worded, it really feels like they were written by like older or like more traditionalist people. The comment sections of more alternative looking people are a bit of a cesspool. People deducting points for piercings and haircuts, which again are never meant to come into this. It's like no matter what you do, people won't be able to help but bring their own subjective biases into things. So maybe beauty in its most basic sense is objective and then it becomes subjective. And I think these piercings and haircuts are making people look more attractive rather than less. For like certain people, different piercings and haircuts can enhance their look. I don't want you to come out of this thinking that all the comments as well are being left by men. There's plenty of women leaving comments as well. It's not like a male only subreddit by any means. And I'm also not saying that the scores the women are giving are any nicer. A lot of the time they're even more critical. Now again, everyone involved here is an adult. They're able to make their own decisions whether or not they want to be put out there. It's also worth noting that like a number rating isn't a be all end all. At the end of the day, I really do believe that beauty is subjective. There's people on this subreddit who have been rated a five who I would eat glass for. I would crawl through barbed wire to drink their sweat. I also don't think the subreddit is inherently evil, but a concept like this is always going to attract some of the worst people. And with no amount of moderating, are uh, you going to be able to get on top of that? And again, I do feel like it's overly critical. I think some of the people who are in charge of these ratings need to get out of the house more. Like, look at a real person's face. You can't put literal model celebrities at like a 5.5 and a 7. It's their job to look good. They've got all the money in the world to put into that. They get that shit off tax. So yeah, in conclusion, just go into life having realistic standards. Most of what makes someone really attractive is like their personality and their confidence, their interests and their talents. Just look after yourself physically, mentally, emotionally. Be the best person you can be for you. Just think twice whether or not you need validation from literal anonymous Redditors. But to be clear, in conclusion, I do think this subreddit is sexist. Dude, it's a marvel that this Reddit hasn't been like overrun by like OnlyFans models trying to advertise. Also just remember that every time you like one of my videos, you automatically get one point more attractive. As always, I'd love to know your thoughts and opinions on what I've talked about today. Whether or not you agree or disagree with me, I'd love to hear about it. Whether you thought I was off base with anything, I'm always open to changing my opinion on things. Probably not on sexism though. I made up my mind on that one. Uh, thanks for watching. I really hope you found this interesting. I, I hope I explained my thoughts well. Uh, new upload next week on something else.